All right, so this week, uh, Runway released some new tools that uh, basically allow you to do rotoscoping or masking a video. Um, so I thought we'd take a look at that this week. Um, before I get started, I just want to say thank you to Alexia, who just became uh, a member on my YouTube page, and thanks to Brad, who became a member on my Patreon page. So again, really appreciate all of your support. Um, cool, so let's get started here. So uh, first thing to note is the way to find this is to... Um, let's go back here. So in video tools, so you'll click on video tools. Sort of a different interface than you see for ladder runway, um, but I think it's uh, a pretty good uh, layout for everything. So first thing you'll need to do is you'll want to upload a video. Um, they recommend they be shorter. Actually, you can't even upload a video. You can't put a video in here that is longer than two minutes. Um, I've personally found that it is probably better to keep it in the 30 second to one minute range. Um, the longer the video gets, the more issues you have with sort of like keeping track of all the masks and I think it starts to get a little uh, jittery um, and it starts to like have some performance issues. So what I did is I took a six minute video and I chopped it up into a bunch of different pieces, each 30 seconds of length, um, and I uploaded them all individually to Runway. Um, so you want to upload, if you want to upload your video, you can do it here. Uh, just click this button and then upload it. I've already done it because it takes a little bit of time to upload video uh, to Runway. So you'll take your uh, video you've added and you'll drag it down here into working space let's drop it in and then it's just going to take a little bit of time to load all right so once you've got a little bit loaded here uh, the first thing you want to do is just basically tell it what you want to mask um, so you'll notice here there are two options there's one for exclude and there's one for include um, I generally use the include more often than I use the exclude. It's just if there's like a little area that I want to mask out, I'll use the exclude. Um, you can also set it to uh, capture the foreground or the background. Um, for this video, we're going to capture the foreground. So you're just going to click on the include button, and then you're going to click on a space. I generally start with something right in the middle. It sort of figures it out there. Um, I've been mostly doing it with these mineral videos, and it's been working pretty much fine. Um, you may run into other issues if you have other videos with harder boundaries and that sort of thing. So, you know, just play around with it a little bit. Um, you'll see that it, it created an outline here of this whole shape. One thing I want to note is I do want this little guy here, so I'll click on include as well here. And if you want to remove uh, one of these points, you just click on it again, and you'll see it unselects it. So I'll put that back on. And from here, uh, there's a couple of things you could do. One is you could just click around uh, in the timeline and just sort of make sure, like I'm clicking around every five seconds. And you'll see here, this is a case of where the mask didn't really do a great job. So I want to update my keyframes here. So I'm going to click include again, and I'm just going to click in the middle. And you'll see it updated. Um, and then I'll click on each of these smaller shapes. And then I'll click here again, keep moving around. So with this particular example, it's actually pretty fast and it's pretty good because, you know, it's it's a, a mineral on a silhouetted background and it can pretty much figure out what's going on pretty easily. So now I clicked around and it looks pretty good. Um, the next thing to do is let's go back to the very beginning here. Um, the preview button here will actually like sort of show you the entire video um, masking. So see here, like in some cases, I did notice I was missing a little bit of masking. So it's missing a couple. It's kind of up to me if I want to keep those. Um, and the way to keep those would be essentially to sort of go back and find those spaces and update my keyframes. So I'm going to click Include, click on this. This particular video doesn't have any spaces where I really need to do a lot of excluding. Um, but let's say there were some sort of gap in the middle of this. I might want to click on exclude um, to exclude some of that area. This is really interesting. I, sometimes I notice, so here's a good example. I would want to exclude this little area, right? So if I click exclude, and I click right there, and I click include, and I click in the center. So you'll see, I don't know if this actually does a good job here. This is a case of where, depending on what you want, like you might want to really go in and once you get a basic mask set up, you might want to go into After Effects and do a little bit more cleanup job. Um, but in most part, I think this is looking pretty good. Um, I probably won't do a full, you know, I would usually spend another five or ten minutes here just sort of cleaning these up a little bit more um, and making sure I'm getting exactly what I want out of this. 
So like, this is a case of where there's one that I want to include. And sometimes I notice that when you include this, it sort of like excludes everything else, and you have to go back in and update your keyframes to just include these other areas. And I'd probably say, you know, one thing I also notice if you add a bunch of these trigger points, um, it can start to like get really confused about what it's doing. So try to keep it as minimal as possible. So that happened to be four. That seemed about right for that. So I think this is pretty good. Um, I'm ready to go here with this. Actually, I'll do this one. One more. You'll notice that it tends to struggle with like multiple like outlines of things. Um, so now I think this is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and export this. So if I click on the export button up here at the right, um, you will have some options here of how you want to actually do the background color. So you've got green, blue, pink, or you can set a custom color. Um, it kind of depends on what your video is. I might recommend green just as the default. Uh, just because, especially if you're working with people or other things, there aren't a lot of green in those colors and you won't run into masking issues. Um, one thing to note is uh, this is actually free. Uh, so I found out yesterday that this is a totally free tool um, from Normary. So like, if you're a video animator, like this is a pretty cool thing and you can get it for free. Um, one thing to note is uh, if you have a creator plan, which is, I believe, $15 a month, um, you have access to HD quality. So I don't know what the SD quality actually is. Um, this is a 1024 by 1024 video, so I will export out the HD. Um, I guess, oh, okay, so here's what SD is. So SD is 640 by 640. Um, so, you know, depending on how high res your video is and depending on what you want to do, um, this can be a pretty good deal. Like, this is much, much faster than actually going in and drawing your own hand rotoscopes, right? So, um, Pretty good tool, and then you'll export this. It'll export out the video, and you'll be able to download it from there. Um, so, you know, if this is really free or going to stay free with your creator plan, it's a really good deal compared to say, you know, some of the other quick tools that are in Normal where they charge by the frame. Um, so, I've used a similar tool like this. I believe Topaz Labs has one that's sort of similar. The challenge with that one is that you still need to rotoscope every um, every individual frame. The difference is you're drawing sort of outlines around the shapes, and it's a little bit easier. It makes it easier in that you just have a big pen tool and you just sort of draw the outline. But this is really smart because I literally, you know, you saw me, I made a rotoscope out of this in like five minutes. Um, and to do this in After Effects would be really, really hard. Like all these little edges would be so annoying to, to mask out. So this is a pretty cool tool. Um, I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this demo. So if you have other questions, feel free to drop a note in the YouTube channel. Um, and otherwise you can also drop me a note in Slack. Um, so thanks for this and I'll see you next time.